Exercise Maple Flag is experiencing its first emergency. A jet is in trouble, but as yet, no one knows who or what is wrong. In the tower, a full-scale emergency has been declared. There's a possibility of a crash landing. A carefully prepared contingency plan swings into action. Emergency services all over Cold Lake are being called to action stations. the jet in trouble is a German phantom it's been hit by a bird and is flying on only one engine the video will provide evidence if there's a crash. Three, three, and three, four. Target three, 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 four, Roger. Proceed back to the video. The landing is safe, the crisis over. The damaged German Phantom has been towed to a hangar for investigation and repair. It might not fly again for months. The pilot isn't here. He's been treated for shock. This morning, the guys were on a sweep mission for a bomber package. Uh, they've been on a low mission. That means uh, 300 feet above the ground. And uh, this guy here, he was number two. He looked to the left towards his leader, and suddenly he heard this big bang. And he was looking to his right. And uh, of course, wind was screaming inside the cockpit. And he realized that he had a bird, bird strike. And uh, as you can see, a uh, big hole in a uh, windscreen there, and uh, the guys have been very lucky in the way it turned out that they didn't get hurt or anything like that. From uh, what we could see up to now, uh, only small pieces left of the bird, of course. Uh, uh, small debris were around uh, his life vest, his helmet and his visor, and inside the canopy there was also, there were also some small debris, but uh, no large piece left from the bird. As you can imagine, on high speed, like say we are going uh, 400, 450 knots, and there is not much left uh, of the bird, and uh, it will take us a while until we find out what kind of or, or what type and size of bird it was. Uh, the only debris which are a little bit uh, bigger are the debris of the glass from the windscreen. If a glass piece like this hits you around here somewhere, so it could be as well that you die from it. Uh, we were flying the exercise, the maple flag, uh, but very much to the north in the area. Um, just at the time, we like to recommit to the fight. We made a right hand turn and um, then we had the bird strike in the right windscreen. A loud bang, and afterwards, um, some feathers were flew through the cockpit. And um, it got a little bit noisy up there. Actually, um, I guess we were, we were lucky because um, if the bird maybe hit us in a, in a different way, the whole bird would have come through. And um, in 300 feet, um, that gets really nasty. I guess so. <laughs> but um, we were lucky. Okay, that's the way it is. This airbase lies in the path of one of the busiest bird migration routes on Earth, and these annual war games always coincide with the start of that season. 
We, we get the odd bird strike. We haven't lost an aircraft because of a bird strike yet. Uh, we have a pretty good uh, system here to track the birds. We have a lot of big birds here in Cold Lake, and we're in one of the major migration routes for all the uh, geese and the pelicans that are heading up to the uh, northern tundra. Despite the near disaster, the war and the flying goes on, even though the birds are still in the air too. The maple flag organizers set danger levels from one to five, depending on the number of pelicans and geese in transit. At level four, everyone gets grounded. The trick is to spot the birds before they leave the lakes. We used to have a guy that, in his job in the fall and in the spring, he was the, called the bird man of Cold Lake. Like, that was his job to track the migratory birds, like the geese and the, the Canada geese, the snow geese, and the pelicans. But we phased that out, and we've gotten that new radar. The radar is unusual. It doesn't spot the warplanes, it only picks up big birds. It will pick up the birds because they are of a smaller size and not the jets. And it will show the general direction that the birds are actually moving. You can see that the birds are streaming northward and they're moving away. Millions of birds. In Germany, we don't low fly at all anymore. The only low flying the uh, Luftwaffe does is here. So we did our two weeks in Goose Bay before we came here to get everyone qualified back down at, a, at 100 feet. And we, luckily, we didn't have any bird strikes. But here, as we got here in the, um, the migrating season, beginning of April or middle of May, started. And yeah, you know, there's always the chance. And the chap that did have the bird strike was very, very lucky. It uh, whistled down the side of his head rather than took him in the face. Adrian Rycroft is an RAF pilot on attachment to the German Air Force. Previously, he was with 29 Fighter Squadron. Rycroft's moustache was his trademark. Soon after he was filmed here, it was forcibly shaved off by Flying Officer Reuter. Yes, I must admit, I knew Reuter was there. I knew they had something planned, but uh, having your moustache shaved off in the middle of the... <laughs> for a bunch of drunken idiots was... That was OK. You expect that sort of thing. Have a two ship at ten, a four ship at twenty, and a two ship at thirty, right, well, on, top, right on top of each other. Anybody pick up any trail groups? Flight Lieutenant Rycroft has become an accepted part of the German squadron. He now wears their uniform and is even the butt of their humour. They always make jokes. They call you the prisoner of war and all that. But no, they treat you and they take you to heart straight, straight away. You are very much part of the Richthofen Geschwader. You're as much part of the squadron in Germany as I was in the UK. You're certainly not made to feel unwelcome or not wanted at all. To fit in with the squadron, you're expected to wear the uh, German flying kit. The only bit is, although they allow you to wear their wings, you're expected always to wear the, the RAF wings rather than the, uh, than the German wings. I must admit, being on a German squadron at the moment, they're, they, not, they don't have problems with their, with their identity, but they do wonder for the last 50 years every you know we're all together and part of nato and then once a year suddenly the germans are out and the russians are in and we're all the allies against the germans again so and i think we didn't realize in, in england especially how upset they were at the d-day where instead of being a memorial it turned into a big jamboree and the germans were specifically excluded at least on these they were invited to turn up so in some respects they do think you know our, are they part of NATO? Are they changed and they're now not forgiven, but they're all part of a team? Or are they really always to be remembered as the, uh, as the defeated people? In Germany, the military hasn't got the same respect, same standing in society as the military does in the UK. It's not shouted about, it's very much kept in the background. All the history is known, but you just don't talk about it as much as you would, uh, and certainly not in public. I think there's a lot of difference in the personality of the different nations. Um, the way they do the job, there are some differences. But I, the basic, you know, like we talked about, the basic uh, competitiveness and uh, eagerness to win is is the same in, in everybody, as far as I've seen. The first shot's trashed by ECM. Yeah. Following their afternoon battle mission, Reuter and Carter tried to work out whether they got their missiles away before the American F-15 Eagle shot them. Did they make any fatal mistakes? And we take a Fox 2 on the lower guy, who's at about 25,000 feet. Yeah. Uh, at this stage, when you're operational on a squadron, you know when you've screwed up. 
uh, and you come down knowing when it's your fault, and you're fairly well, well, you're ready to admit it usually in the debrief anyway. Sure we, we, we may have missed another yeah. run out there. Yeah. yeah, I must have run out yeah. But we came to shoot the guy off your tail before we both ran out of west, didn't we? We'll do yeah, just gonna have to run, run, run. I perform. Okay, because for airspace, you can't come straight south anyway. Here we're going head to head with the strikers, but they're at 40 miles away at the moment. Multiple spots on the nose. Just lock into them if you can, right? Yeah, I've got to find them first. <laughs> Eagles are really doing a good job of targeting everybody out. So, uh, consequently, it's just a case of, uh, you know, being threatened to boarding, threatened to boarding, and, and you do that all day until you run out of gas. Yeah, hell, we've got a friendly, we've got loads of friendlies in there and loads of mix as well. Okay. Just multiple spots on the nose. Now naked, fucking hell. It, it, it sounds bad in a way, but I mean, against the Eagles, that's what you expect, really. And, you know, if we were really fighting them, there wouldn't be a whole lot of guys coming home. Come on, give me the lock, you fucking bastard. You know where those guys are, right? I've got strikers merged with friendly as 1-0-0-37 tactical. You just spent the whole time running away. Uh, and then eventually you just got chased down and shot at the end. And it's very depressing not to have got any missiles off your aircraft and spent the whole time running away and then eventually got shot down as well. Very depressing when, he, when you realise that if for real, uh, you'd be in a parachute uh, and then uh, probably in a prisoner war camp. Congratulations. Thanks, Flash. Flying Officer Reuter has been promoted. He's now Flight Lieutenant Reuter. It's an air crew tradition that he must drink every drop of whatever is in the silver mug, mixed by his fellow flyers. What is this? <laughs> oh, I can tell you're enjoying it. Okay. Yeah, see, Yak. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd like to know what was in it. Orange juice. Yeah. Stop there. <laughs> okay, uh, in revenge then, nobody leaves until the money I've put behind the bar gets drunk. It makes you want to get up there, do it again, and do better. <laughs> Well, supersonic with your ass on fire is another way of looking at it. Yeah, going fast, going low, even being high, uh, getting a kick out of uh, knowing, some, knowing you've got the drop on someone, knowing you've got your weapon away first, you've won. If it was for real, it's, it's, it's an adrenaline burst. You know for real, he'd be a smoking piece of wreckage uh, and you'd be coming home for tea and medals. And uh, it's indescribable the sort of high you get out of that. Next, the war games hot up and the top guns turn to the spy in the sky for help. <laughs> <laughs>